Hello everybody, I hope you're doing fantastically well. It is Connor here and we are back with a little bit of a tactical breakdown of Newcastle United. Listen, tactics have been a massive part of Leeds United's life under Marcelo Bielsa and I want to give you a little bit of a breakdown on, on what I believe and, and what I think is the way forward to beat Newcastle United. Now, what have we figured out today from the press conference? Well, Diego Llorente, Pascal Strauch and Robin Cock are all out of this contest positive, positively for Newcastle, well, for us anyway, <laughs> from the Newcastle side of things. John Joe Shelby is out, although I'm not 100% sure he would, he would have started this contest anyway. John Joe Shelby is out. Callum Wilson, absolutely key, is also out of this one. So they're the main ones. Obviously, Paul Dummett has been out for a while, so he's also unavailable. But that's the big news for today. We also know that Adam Forshaw is going to be back next week. Whether or not that's going to be next week or next year, we don't know with Forshaw. But let's get in to the tactical breakdown. So what did we see against Manchester United from Newcastle? Well, it was sort of a, a flat 5-4-1. And that's what you're going to see with Newcastle. You're not going to see much tactical expertise, in my personal opinion, from Steve Bruce. What you are going to see is Newcastle sitting in and trying to counter-attack Leeds. Whether or not that is going to be a 3-5-2, whether or not that's going to be a 5-3-2 or a, or a 5-4-1, they all sort of mould into the same aspect, which is when Newcastle are defending, they have every single man and behind the ball, let the opposition have possession and uh, look for the counter-attack with one man and one man only, Alan Sen Maximan. So one thing I've noticed about Steve Bruce just in general and what he does with his Newcastle side is when something's not working, when there's been a loss, he will change personnel. And obviously, what do we know about Marcelo Bielsa, which is the, the key difference between both managers? Bielsa doesn't do that. Bielsa persists. He tries to improve the project. That is the player. Steve Bruce doesn't do this. What Steve Bruce does is try to take men out and then put other men in. You know, it's not like he hasn't got the squad depth there really but overall when you're looking at it, it is it does seem to be that he doesn't persist with the players if they have had a bad game so they overall had a bad game against Manchester United so are we looking at a, a brand new Newcastle side uh, for this one you know there's a lot of talk about the goalkeeper which is massively positive for Leeds United if you're chopping and changing goalkeepers this early on in the season that is not good for you as a side there's a lot of talk about what's going on up front especially with Dwight Gale being given a new contract very very recently but he doesn't seem to feature he didn't come on against Manchester United for Newcastle which is bizarre when you're in need of a goal but is it going to be the Alan Sen Maximan and Dwight Gale show up front? I spoke earlier as well about the midfield. It looks like maybe you'd sort of have a Matty Longstaff in there as opposed to a John Joe Shelby. So that's going to be fascinating to see. Are we going to see Fernandez, Shah, and Clark as a back three? I think this is what a lot of Newcastle fans would prefer to see. So this is the thing with 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 uh, who we're going to be playing on Friday night. We just don't know what team is going to be set out, but the system is there and it's going to be obvious what they do in terms of that. So the positive as well for Leeds United is in the first three games, we've had a real problem with the pressure from the opposition. Now, what do we know from Newcastle's midfield? Well, there is always a lack of press from uh, their sort of uh, four in the middle. This could massively aid Leeds. Uh, the force the first sort of four games we've we've had some serious pressure in and around that midfield which has seen Leeds lose the ball it's seen Leeds make uncharacteristic mistakes and, and a team who has a high press in the midfield for me is always going to cause Leeds uh, a, a serious degree of problems for, for spells in a game now this could massively aid Rodrigo now we've been speaking about Rodrigo a lot in the midfield but if there's not a lot of pressure on him and the opposition teams, uh, the opposition team isn't offering that much in terms of uh, an attacking aspect throughout the middle that's going to benefit him hugely because obviously we know he's got a few defensive mishaps but he loves to attack and it's definitely going to aid him in terms of being on the ball and being off the ball in terms of recovery and similar to Manchester United last week uh, that they, they sort of they sort of deployed a front four offensively did Manchester United and, and this is what we saw against us as well and this is what I, I mean. I was doing a bit of analysis for this, and I was having a look around. And this is what Leeds do week in, week out. Anyway, you know, when we go forward, there's a pack of Leeds players aided by fullbacks who are bombing on. But also, there is naturally always a front four when you see players like Jack Harrison, Rafinha, Rodrigo, and of course Patrick Bamford. Now, if we're able to break between the lines in this attacking phase, in these attacking phases, and find space in between the midfield and the attack, this is where Leeds can seriously damage Newcastle because the structure naturally breaks down and space is always going to damage Newcastle United in the Premier League and once again this could massively facilitate Rodrigo who loves to find space in and between the lines and could do some nice silky touches like we saw against Burnley. 
And also what this will do is players like Kieran Clark and players like Shah and Fernandez, one of them will have to be tracking Rodrigo in that attacking midfield spot. So if he can find space between the lines, between the midfield and the uh, the defence, it's going to draw players like that out and that's going to enable Harrison and Rafinha to gain space in behind just like uh, Patrick Bamford will be and that's going to be the Calvin Phillips show if Calvin Phillips can spot these little jinx in movement from the front four uh, this will be a massive massive problem for Newcastle United and this was this will essentially replicate what we saw from Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes where Bruno Fernandes was just running off the centre backs was running in and behind their defensive line and Bruno Fernandes was just finding him consistently and this caused massive problems for Newcastle United so this is definitely something Leeds could replicate Okay. Calvin Phillips is going to be absolutely huge in this game. I think we all know that Pogba was given the freedom of Old Trafford last week against Newcastle because of the lack of press from their midfield. If Calvin is given this space, we saw primarily against Everton last year when he was given the space, he dictated that game. And I can see him doing the exact same thing at this moment in time. It's up to the front four to move and, and, and really offer spaces up top so Calvin can, can aid that with some wonderful... Ball, some you know his 40 50 yard distribution can sometimes be absolutely outrageous so this is definitely something Leeds United could utilize you know Newcastle aren't a naturally counter-attacking team I don't think when you look at their squad makeup I don't think they've got that much pace I don't think they've got that much pragmatism as well in terms of differing styles and being able to build up through the transition but what I do believe is that any team in this division can counter-attack I think I think there's just that much quality in this division you look at Newcastle with the likes of Alan St Maximan He's going to be able to get past that man-marking system. We saw that in the Newcastle game at St. James's Park last time when he came on and the whole game changed because what he did was he cut the, the, the link in between this Leeds United defensive side, which essentially is going man for man. And, and, and what we see against the top clubs is normally opposition players being able to break that man for man system and it creates absolute chaos and there's space everywhere. And let's say Max Mann was taking on two, three, four players last time he was coming up against Leeds United. And what does this do? It facilitates space for other players to be able to get in and this is definitely where, where Newcastle could really hurt Leeds United what I naturally would love to see and I know we're not going to see it with this Leeds United side but we might see it in aspects of the game is Leeds sort of just sitting back and let, letting Newcastle have the ball I don't think Newcastle are good on the ball at all that's backed up by multiple stats I'm sure every other Newcastle fan would say the same, same thing as well so if Newcastle have the ball and are trying to build up and Leeds are able to nick the possession off them and then there's a counter attack on with our front four it's going to be hugely dangerous for Newcastle we saw it at St James's Park in the first 15-20 minutes when Leeds should have really been about 3-0 up and out of sight it was so dangerous that that you know we should gain confidence going into this game from from that last game, even though we did let them in. Newcastle are also quite sloppy in the final third when it comes to ball retention, which is only going to aid Leeds United in terms of you know facilitating that counter attacking option, which is always going to be on. Players like Joe Linton and Almiron are quite wasteful, but last season what we did see was the emergence of Joe Willock, who I think he scored seven goals in seven. He was absolutely fantastic, and he comes forward as a sort of second striker sometimes, which is going to be fascinating to see. You know, they also brings up the question, is he going to start Dwight Gale? I don't think Bruce will, but if you know, you've know you got players like Joe Willock and Alan set Maximan uh, bombing on forward, then that is still going to be a, a big a big threat for Newcastle United against Leeds. And that is sort of, it's sort of backed up and evidenced by the fact that you know Newcastle still have scored 10 goals in five games. Yes, they may not have been against the sort of opposition that we've come up against, but overall, they are still scoring goals, which is always going to be a worry for any opposition. Now, what did we speak about at the start? It was the goalkeeper aspect of Newcastle's play now this is what I'd like to see Leeds do more in terms of just being sort of creative on the field and just getting as many shots off as possible Patrick Bamford at the goalkeeper's uh, feet ready for any sort of mistake Freddie Woodman is low on confidence at this moment in time and even if Darlow was to come in you know chopping and changing goalkeepers at this stage of the season isn't a good look for any club so if Leeds are able to exploit that get more shots off on goal which I think at this moment in time we overcomplicate it sometimes we overcomplicate it through the transitions and Leeds overpass it I think shots on goal can always produce something and, and you know when we reverting to Newcastle last week when they did pre uh, play Manchester United Greenwood having a strike uh, an ominous strike from about 25 yards out Freddie Woodman spilled it and Cristiano Ronaldo finished it for his first goal for the club so 
you know, it, we've got to put goalkeepers under pressure when they're in this moment, 100%. So I'd love to see that more from Leeds United. What I noticed in the last game that Leeds United played at St. James's Park, the 2-1 victory was Leeds, as I said, were dominant in the early stages. Obviously got the, got the lead through Rafinha. But then for a solid 20 to 30 minutes, for some bizarre reason, Leeds started to fall back. The press decreased hugely. The intensity decreased hugely. And Newcastle started to really come into the game. This was prolonged in the second half. Obviously, Newcastle got the equaliser. Then Leeds got the second almost in instantaneously afterwards. But Leeds cannot afford to retreat at this moment in time, especially with the midfield fragility, which is so prevalent in this Leeds side at the minute. Leeds have to get control of that midfield and cannot leave Calvin Phillips as exposed. As I said, with the Newcastle press in the midfield not being as present as it, you know, as it, as it, as it is against the other sides that we've we've played this season, that's going to aid Leeds United. But we simply cannot get complacent and just uh, and sit back. We've got to be absolutely relentless for the whole game, and that's where we can really break Newcastle. Yes, scoring early will be massively helpful to Leeds United, but we did that last time and then we sat back and we just cannot allow Newcastle to gain control of this game, especially with that crowd behind them. What I'd also like to see in this game is underlaps and overlaps. Obviously, the underlap is when you know, you've know you got your winger out wide and then you see maybe a Furpo or you see maybe a Stuart Dallas or a Jamie Shackleton in this game you know, coming inside and facilitating them in central spaces. I would love to see that because Newcastle in the midfield, as I've said before, for me, are a little bit shaky. If Leeds can overlap, Overload in that area. I think that's where the problems are going to lie. I also don't think we've seen enough overloads from the likes of Junior Firpo, who's only getting used to the system, and Luke Ayling. And I think on the Luke Ayling side of things, at right back, this is why we're not seeing the, the, the quality that we've seen from Rafinha last season because normally it was a, a real cohesive pairing between those two, Rafinha and, and Luke Ayling on that right-hand side. That seems to have dissipated massively and, and consequently it's also um, aided the fact that Leeds United's um, attacking output hasn't been great this season so you need the right back whoever that's going to be for me it would be Jamie Shackleton because when he's come on we've seen a real partnership between Rafinha and him so especially in that overload and uh, an underload department so I think Leeds really need to sort of sort of jump on that one and the players really need to take it upon themselves to really hurt Newcastle in these areas in the last game Alioski was overlapping you know so many times I think I think the fullback at that moment I'm not sure if it was Mankio but he was getting dizzy so these are definitely aspects where Leeds can hurt Newcastle and I think overall Leeds just can't become predictable. Uh, what I've seen recently is Jack Harrison getting the ball out wide. Obviously, Leeds naturally play out wide all the time. Jack Harrison getting the ball out wide. Rafinha getting the ball out wide and just aimless balls into the box. This is why the overload and the underloads, they become, they, you know, it makes it makes our play less predictable because so far it's just been those sort of mainstays of, of wing play getting the ball out and crossing it in. And, and, and this is only going to be aided as well. And I keep using aided and facilitated because it's all about the, the contributions that each and every player should be making but Calvin Phillips' role against Newcastle is going to be huge you know the quarterback who's not going to have that much pressure on pressure on him you know he's been fabulous uh, so far this season I think he can really hurt Newcastle so that's going to be it guys let me know what you think in the comment section below have you enjoyed this analytical breakdown would you like to see more of these let me know in the comment section below we've got all the good links below uh, for the uh, for the Patreon and, and if you want to donate to the channel which obviously goes back into all the all the uh, design and, 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 and upkeep of the channel, which uh, which is something. Um, but yeah, let me know, guys. Follow us on all our socials, of course, and I will catch you in a bit.